Hey everyone, this is Noah Khalees, creator of Blackthorn Prods, and what you're watching is episode 4 of the how to create a simple 2D customization menu in Unity. So far our character's head can change colour. To do so we set up some basic UI and made a changing colour script. Now after showing the script to my bro Liam, a great game programmer, he commented on how long and inflexible the script is. And that is the goal of today's video. Clean up our script so it is shorter, clear and flexible. By the end of the video our script will have gone from something bloated like this to something like this thanks to some simple programming tools such as arrays and loops. Alright we are back inside of Unity, uh, I'm going to go straight away to my scripts folder and I'm going to double click on the changing colour script so we can edit it, in my case inside of Mono Develop. So first things first, I'm going to get rid of these four color variables and I'm going to replace them with a public color array that I'm simply going to call colors. Now we can use arrays basically to bunch uh, together a group of variables of the same type. I'm now going to get rid of all these if statements. So we're going to now type in for and then I'm going to double press on the tab key on the keyboard and what this will do is it will automatically create the syntax for the for loop, which is a neat little trick. Um, and then I'm going to replace this word max with colors dot length. Uh, so basically the code inside the for loop that we, that we will be creating very soon will repeat itself as long as i, this new variable called i, is less than the number of elements inside of our colors array. And once uh, that code has been run, I will increment itself of one. We are now going to create one if statement inside of our for loop. And this is how it goes. We're going to type in if. And we are going to check whether i is equal to our what to the value of our what color variable. And if it is, we're simply going to set our head's color to be equal to uh, the color in our colors array that has an index of i. We are now going to come down here and remove these four public functions that we made in the previous video and that are called from our buttons and that basically um, change the value of our what color variable. So instead of those four functions, I'm going to type in public void and I'm going to call it change head color. And inside the parentheses, I'm going to pass in a int variable called index. And what we're going to do is set our what color variable equal to index. Now, this may uh, be a little confusing, but I promise you it's going to be a lot clearer once we plug everything inside of Unity. Okay, we are back inside of Unity. I'm going to now plug everything inside uh, of the changing color script. I'm going to grab the head color display square and place it into the square head display slot. And I'm also going to set up once more our colors that are now inside of a colors array. So like uh, uh, as I did in the previous video, I'm making sure the color has no transparency. And with the eyedropper tool, I'm simply selecting the colors that have already been set up in the panel. I'm now going to select all four buttons and heading over to the button component, I'm going to drag and drop the character creation manager script and inside the function, we will just choose the function we just created, which is the change head color. And you can see that a new section has appeared, prompting us to type in a number. Now this number will be the value of index. Uh, so for our pink color button, we will leave that at zero, meaning that index will be equal to zero. Uh, and as a result, our what color variable will be equal to zero. I'm going to do the same for the blue button, type in three, for the gray button, two, and the yellow button, one. Let me remind you that when our what color variable is equal to zero, our head color will be equal to the color in our colors array that has an index of zero, which is in this case pink. 
All right, heading back inside of our scripting editor, I'm going to now clean up these two public functions. So I'm going to get rid of them, and instead I'm going to put another public function that I'm going to call change uh, panel state. And inside the parentheses of this function, I'm going to type in, I'm going to make a bool, I'm going to pass in a bool variable called state. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable or disable our panel depending on the state we want. So if we click on our cross, um, we want to call the change panel state function and we want to leave this box unchecked, uh, so false, meaning that we want our panel to be disabled. Uh, however, for the head color display square, we again want to call our change panel state function, but this time we want this box to be checked because we want our uh, panel to be enabled. To make sure you've really understood, if we click on our cross, this state variable will be equal to false, uh, meaning that we'll have here panel.setActive false. And same thing for the uh, square, except state will be equal to true. All right, I'm now going to test this out inside of Unity. So pressing play, as you can see, uh, the panel disables and enables itself correctly, and our character's head changes color. Excellent, so um, yeah, as you can see, we got the exact same results with twice less code. All right, now that we have cleaned up our code, prepare in episode five to add more functionality to our menu. Uh, so yeah, in the next video we're going to create a script capable of handling the customization of the eyes, weapons, and mouth. Now if you want to get notified when the fifth episode comes out, or simply want to be awesome by supporting me and my channel, then hit the subscribe button, it really be appreciated. Uh, in the meantime, I definitely urge you to check out some of my games on itch.io, the link is in the description down below, and there's no download required to play these games. Uh, yeah, alright, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, and I'll see you in a few days for episode 5. Alright, cheers guys!